Oh yeah, so the first person, insert typical username here. If Mr. North Star gets a new anime, who should do the animation? Well, a lot of people have been pointing to David Production recently, but I don't know. When it comes to some shows like this, they always somehow have like their own personal animation group. Like, because even a uh, um, Cobra was like that, wasn't it? And then Gona Guys, yeah, Cobra. Yeah, Gona Guys, all dynamic planning. Then um, what other thing had their own? Like, didn't Fist have that for the movie? Yeah, yeah, like, it was called have... North Star Pictures and yeah. something else, but. I, I think it was another company along with them also, but they didn't Cyborg Cy- 009 and Double Man wasn't that was that, was that all that still um that wasn't that Dynamic Planning it was another group right? Uh, it was Dynamic Planning they teamed up with I think B Train I think um, or some other studio I don't know I guess uh because even whoever did the animation for the Strawberry Flavor. Like it wasn't um it, it wasn't complete animation. It was somewhere along the lines of the a, a little bit higher than the JoJo commercials you would see for uh, the Ultra Jump, but it was definitely very detailed. So if they can keep that you know same level of detail and just you know better movements or you know yeah I guess it's that just a bit of presentation or I and excel at it, then we could just stick with that since that was like the most accurate depiction of the manga so far. Yeah. Alright, question two. In creating a manga, what are some things to keep in mind? Oh boy, that's actually a big one. That sounds like a question for a, for a single video. In creating a manga, what are some things to keep in mind? So, I don't know, we said this before, like, we're like, just no one to stop. That's the first one of the first steps. <laughs> I guess, but like, when you're creating something, I don't really think you're thinking that far ahead, though. <laughs> I'll create this, and I'll know how to finish it. <laughs> well... Like, what I'm writing isn't exactly manga per se, but it, it's still a story, so it, it just should apply to everything. And you always have a goal in mind, and most of the time a lot of authors say that you you think of the ending first, you have a goal in your head, and you try to find ways to get to that point. That's what some author does. Is I know the author for Claymore, he went a bit of a different route, but he basically, like, he had a goal, but he wasn't thinking about getting there. He just, like, whenever he felt like it... <laughs> I'll get there when I feel like yeah. it. Because I know when Gona Guy was making Devil Man, he definitely had, he knew, he had a vision of what to do, but then with stuff like Wizinger Z and Enma Queen, it's just more like, yeah, I'll just make this up as I go. <laughs> yeah, no, and then you get like these really random endings that are just like, what the fuck just happened? I don't know, I guess that's the important part, part really, just to have a goal or what whatever story you're trying to tell to others. Not to mention, um, I guess another thing that would help is to like, keep a note, a book, or, like to be sure that you don't forget your own canon, or because I like the Guyver example, as we talked a few podcasts ago, was that you know like <laughs> he keeps repeating the same exposition that everyone should know by now. So what the hell? <laughs> Unless he's forgetting it himself. Uh, maybe he's trying to remind new readers. I don't know. There's that also, but I feel like a lot of times most authors just forget what they wrote. <laughs> or, or oh, pet- there's definitely some authors that do that. Yeah, or they forget characters entirely. <laughs> I mean, even Toriyama forgot about a character at one point. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Third question: What is your opinion on Gal Gaigar? Still haven't seen it yet. I've seen a couple episodes. Uh, I mean, I heard it gets really good later because I don't know. There's like bunch of hype uh, for this one, or at least from what I've heard. Mm. Like, the first couple episodes are okay. It's kind of like your standard uh, super robot stuff, you know, episodic. You know, a monster, big monster comes to town and terrorizes people. Our main character comes and saves the day with his, you know, awesome finishing move that, you know, you kind of question why they don't start off with that. Mm. You know? <laughs> it's like, just beat the shit out of each other first, you know, buildings get destroyed, and then I'll use my super awesome finishing move that'll take you down in one hit. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like that, but I heard it develops a story later on, so I don't know how long we'll have to wait for that to happen, but, you know, I do like my Super Robot stuff, so I'm sticking around for that, but I don't have that much of an opinion, since I think I've only watched, like, two or three episodes. Well, I haven't watched any, but all I saw was a trailer. The opening's pretty good, yeah. too. But, you know, most Super Robot openings, 
Yeah, you can, because they eat a good old Yeah, meat. usually they're by jam project, so that's one reason. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Alright, Salmon in Lake or in Lake, I'm not sure. Question, well, will the new JoJo anime get less manly as it moves into its latter seasons or will they redesign the characters? Well, I, I guess this question has sort of answered itself with the premiere of Diamond is Unbreakable where initially in its manga form, it continued to have the Stardust Crusaders design where the characters were still masculine. But then as the story kept going, characters would gradually, sometimes shockingly, change their designs altogether. So they would just deflate into like these very thinner looking characters, or even the hairstyles would change, uh, facial features such as the noses. Uh, or size. Yeah, or I think even lips okay. too. But, but then uh, the, the anime for them is Unbreakable, they just showed like something, sort of a style like a... a not not exactly the, the final product of JoJo, but somewhere leading towards that because you can tell that the characters were definitely not as big as they were portrayed in the beginning, but not as like uh, fabulous or flamboyant and in, like into the final products of Part Four and the Star of Five. So I think there there definitely is a a mindset where they're gonna try to like segue people into that. Uh, into that fabulous territory of, of mental audio because there's definitely some episodes where mostly Jota related episodes where <laughs> the art style would actually be a little bit more detailed despite you know having a the new character designs. So yeah, I don't know. Depends what they do it because I mean I'm, I'm kind of really curious how Part Five is gonna look and feel because I'm hoping it to be like a really action packed, uh, fast paced. Jojo part and then Stone Ocean. Mm. Well, then again, with all honesty, none of the Jojo anime ever had like a accurate representation of its manga visuals. It's a uh, even back in the days of the OVAs because of Junichi Hayama doing some scenes and character designs, which you know those differences like Jotaro had more spikier hair in the 2000s OVAs, and I think there's only one episode being the Darby episode which resembles the manga the most out of everything of the OVAs and then you take Phantom Blood, they don't even, none of the characters have the same hairstyles as their manga counterparts or and some of the outfits are different too and then um, Battle Tendency, like every, every, and that one everyone just looks better like you know on point. Same thing goes with Crusader, they, everyone has the shoulders and the anime added like this C-shaped crescent moon like lying on their waist of their shirts and they also threw in like these little dots or grain or just, I don't know something on their shirt so you can see like these little marks all around them so yeah this, like so far the anime always seems to go out of the way to make things different but it, it seems to work yeah let's see Yusuke Itachi Urameshi oh yeah this one's in Spanish like congrat uh, yeah, yeah. congratulations <laughs> for 3000 subs and here are my questions one have you seen Kenichi, the Mightiest Disciple, and the manga Noritaka, King of the De los Leos? Actually, I'm not sure what Leos is. <laughs> uh, but do you have any opinions of those manga? Unfortunately, I haven't read any one of those. I do know that Noritaka is a bit more on the obscure side because there's only like 70 chapters translated. All I know has to do with like uh, an underdog like participating like in tournaments. And Kenichi, I never, uh, the, the most I've seen of Kenichi is actually on these all the uh, top 10 anime videos where they mentioned the, uh, like, top 10 badass old guys was one example, and then, um, just trailers I've seen on Funimation discs that I had. So, then I always heard Merlin, like, kind of like, like, joke around saying, oh, I really hate this show, but he says that it just, he doesn't hate it as much as he says. It's more like it's just like he didn't get big, uh, didn't get that into it, and then I heard that later on it just gets way more etchy or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. I haven't checked it out either. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Num number two. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you think? Kiniko Man, Ninku, Jungle King, Tarchan, and other series didn't appear in J Star's Victory Versus. Oh, that's a question that nobody knows the answer to. Yeah, just... I don't know. Yeah, 
they just. I'm a, I don't know. I'm assuming it's a copyright thing, but then again, like Tarchan is still a. I don't. I don't. I don't think there's any new series that it had, where we went to another magazine. I think everything was all in Jump. Like Ninku, that is true. Ninku is is Jump, but it's a pretty. Obs- I think it is Jump, wasn't it? Like. Uh... I think. I'm just trying to be sure. Ninku. Should be a Wikipedia page, let's see. Um, yep, Shonen Jump, 93 to 95, and it's nine volumes, but, huh, hold up. It actually does have a sequel called Niku Second Stage, that was a Senin and Ultra Jump that went from 2005 to 2011, so. Yeah. Damn, Senin. Yeah, that's a big gap. There was a 10 year gap between the first and second series. I wonder what's gonna happen there. Is it gonna get really fucked up? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm actually kind of wondering. Maybe it has to do with like the copyright thing, because another character that didn't make it is a uh, Cobra and Ryo Saiba from City Hunter. So I think Kaneko Man. They're not part of Shonen Jump anymore, dude. They're now part of something, something new. I forgot the actual name of it, but I don't know. It went from Shonen Jump Weekly Playboy and then something new. I forgot. I don't know what's it called. Um, so I don't know, it could just be a copyright thing, because I'm pretty sure that Kenshiro and Raul, they were added in at the last second, and I, I think I mentioned this in the first podcast, or one of the earlier ones, where um, like Kenshiro and Raul were like also last second additions to the Jump Ultimate Stars game, so maybe it's the same thing, because actually, one thing I did notice is uh, when you play J-Stars in English, like when you see the, the um, you know, the opening credits for not not the opening scene, but basically you see a bunch of text of each series with copyrights, and all, most of them say like Weekly Shonen Jump or Shuisha, but on the Fist of North Star specifically, I noticed that it says like North Star Committee or something along those lines. So it might be uh, some sort of thing where they have to ask permission to use the characters or something. Damn, North Star has its own committee. It's not fucking around. Yeah, like, what do you know of Kinikaman Nisei 2 Dai Shin Geki? I'm assuming that's the four volume manga. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. I haven't, there's not much research that I did, but this is from what I found out. Uh, basically, supposedly it's a retelling of the Ultimate Muscle series. I think it specifically covers the, uh, Chojin Olympics because in hindsight, the Olympics wasn't the most good. <laughs> Like, when it comes to battle, especially like Monsanto's fights, they were pretty crappy, kind of crappy, really. I mean, some of them quite literal, because, I mean, one of them was just one ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was like, that, that had crap in there, and then, um, there was this one the minor villain called, I think it's called Hikardo with an H, because he was Brazilian, so I'm not sure it's pronounced that way. But, yeah, he fights this one villain that's supposed to be like a double choking, or, you know, for DMP, but he only fights him once, and he never appears again in the series ever. It kind of felt like it led to something, but from what I gather, that, that's the only thing I know about it, because I haven't, like, I think there's a few chapters translated for it, but uh, I haven't bothered reading it. But it's it's kind of weird how you thought the manga actually went out of the way to, like, you know what, we just finished Ultimate Muscle, let's make a four-volume retelling on that series. <laughs> so, I, I'm assuming they put more development to the, you know, main cast of characters being Terry the Kid, Gazelle Man, and Seuchin. And I guess Kevin Mass, because one of the flaws of Ultimate Muscle is that there's not that much of a unity in comparison to the first Kaneko Man series where all the characters, you know, you know, had their own screen time, you know, had something to show. And Ultimate Muscle is mostly focused on Kid all the way through. Yeah, but that's pretty much all I know about it. I haven't actually read that. So, uh, Kira Shiki. Congratulations for the subs. My question is, what do you think about Satoshi Kon movies? Yeah, I never seen them. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. I, I I need to. Actually, no. I watched I watched one a long time ago. Um, what was the name? It's the it's Paprika. That one. That was the one. I watched that one. Lo- but it was like a long time ago, so I don't remember it too well. I just remember the animation was like fucking fantastic. That's, that's about I think it. the only Satoshi Kon thing, if I remember correct, well, he also he also made Paranoia Agent, right? Right. And I only saw like a like one or two episodes when it aired on Adult Swim, but that's definitely a show that I need to watch. 
So more than anything, I'll probably be watching that first rather than a movie because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I could be wrong about this, but I think he directed one of the OVA episodes of JoJo. I'm not sure which one though. I'm pretty sure he did because I know that was actually a big name director, of, which kind of shocked me thinking like, wait a minute, you did a JoJo episode? <laughs> But, I don't know, since it's listed for the numbers, like, I, I need to figure out, like, which one they're referring to, 93 or 2000. And do you update, and do you update someday a review of Devilman Lady Manga? Well, so far, the closest thing I've done was a uh, Troll Days of Anime, where I talked about Devilman Lady, but that is definitely something I want to review. I just I need to figure out the time, because it's, um, there's been a bunch of Devilman material being translated now, so, even the old Devilman anthology bits, they need to be updated eventually, maybe by the end of the year or something, because uh, when most of the manga, new manga material is actually fully translated, I think that's well, the proper opportunity to do it. Right, because there's been a lot of Devilman stuff popping out recently. Yeah, from Hades to uh, Saga. Uh, what was the other thing? Demon Knights and then the Devilman, versus Q- Devilman Lady versus Cutie Honey. Ceiling Chan. Yeah, but... <laughs> and then, like, supposedly it was, like, I didn't realize it, because, like, the manga sites I go to didn't have it, but there's also Devil Man vs. Get a Robo. I, I read that one, like, a uh, long time ago, actually. See, I don't remember reading it, because, like, most of the sites I go to, they don't have it, and, like, one of the sites I used to go to where I first started reading manga had that one. Because, like, Cool Taff, like, linked it to me, and I'm like, oh. Well, yeah, there's only like a cool part towards the end with the devil getter. Yeah, I don't know why like like Ryoma changed the getter team so much. They're all like perverts, really. Yeah, who knows? And he made them well, typical the guy. Well, but then again, like, I think this was it was made when Kenny Shikawa passed away. So going that guy was basically doing everything with this thing. Right, but like I don't know, like I didn't really feel like the getter team. Yeah. But then again, I think he was even. Different. I want to say this was like for at least the Getter team. It was more like the anime because I think they were still high school students. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know the manga started off like that too, but I want to say I don't think Ryoma was a martial artist. I think he was a soccer. I think he said he was a soccer player, which I know that's how seventies anime was. Yeah, I know the seventies was the soccer. Yeah, he wasn't you know some badass martial artist that like break into people's dojos. <laughs> yeah. Pizza. And then pilot, you know, the fucking get her. Yeah, the freaking Hayato's like this <laughs> delinquent psychopath. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, it was even worse than Shin Get a Robo. He was a terrorist. Oh. <laughs> Shin Get a Robo, and he, like, he clawed the dude's face off. Oh, and I'm just like, oof. You telling me this guy's gonna help save the world from demons? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, demons, yeah. It's not dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, Oni. Yeah, it wasn't dinosaurs. No, no dinosaurs. I don't know what was up with that change. I'm like, come on, man. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> if you have an option to put dinosaurs in something, just go with the dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, I feel that's an opportunity for for a joke. It actually, that reminds me of... Um, okay, you know Sin City, right? Oh, yeah, like, right. Okay, because uh, you remember the scene where... Um... Oh, I haven't watched it. I, just, oh. I know about it. Because <laughs> <No. Well, laughs> this is one scene where they... There's, they're dumping some bodies like this uh, dinosaur amusement park and they're throwing them like in tar pits, which I don't know if the tar pits were like somewhat real or just for display or whatever. But and so I remember Frank the Miller was saying the whole the whole reason like it takes place there was just an excuse to draw dinosaurs. See, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> yeah, but what what it kind of annoyed me is when he did it to another movie because there's this comic called The Spirit and Frank Miller directed it, but when oh, he corrected man. it, he sort of made it like if it was his own thing, because he would have the Sin City like art style, and at the same time there was one scene where the main character like uh, like is like stranded on a beach or something, and he sees like a T Rex, and you at first you think it's like a gigantic thing, but it's actually just a toy, a close up of a toy there, and I just felt like oh that was pretty random. <laughs> Oh, I, actually, I think I watched a bit of the Spirit movie, like with Samuel Jackson in it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Some octopus yeah, guy. The octopus. Yeah, octopus. I have eight of everything. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay then. 
that I. <laughs> I remember it was like it was weird because like I was watching it with my dad and we we're just both looking at each other because like it was so cartoony in some scenes. We're just like, yeah, what is it supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, because he basically gave the spirit like his regenerative powers and stuff, basically stuff that the actual spirit didn't have. So yeah, Frank was just like, let's make it a loose, let's make it, let's let's millerize it. <laughs> let's take it to the let's Frank it. <laughs> I don't know. Frank and Miller. Alright. Zach Shidiu, congrats for your 3,000 subs. Your videos are really good and inspire me to see more anime slash manga of the manly genre. Like, number one, favorite Get Backers... <laughs> favorite Get Backers character. Um... It's, it's probably Bon Mi, though, just because of the, um... Jagon Eye that he has since he can create, uh... Well, he can create illusions, but what, what I like about him is that... When characters like uh, are about to pass away, he actually like, gives them like a little, puts them in a little illusion in a more of a dreamlike state, basically showing them like a a happy moment for their final um, breaths. And he even does this to like one villain in the series, which I'm not sure if it was only in the anime or in the manga too. But when that villain ends up dying, even though it was a minor one, he ends up like he actually gives them like an image of him succeeding in, in killing him. Which is kind of surprising that he would do that. So, uh, yeah. that, that is one interesting aspect of him. But yeah, from my memory from the Get Backers manga, like uh, I don't recall like too much because after a while, it just kind of got a little, a little. <laughs> there was like too many villains to follow, which it's kind of interesting that for for once to have an arc that has like two or three main villains. But after that, I was just like, oh, I don't know who to keep track of. I see. Yeah, I haven't checked out Get Backers. So. Uh, well, wouldn't really know. I think the anime is probably better as a whole, but uh, I don't know who knows if there was ever a reboot, and then they, they would probably do everything from the beginning to because I know the manga version is more edgy in in it. And oddly enough, in the anime, the, the main two characters come off as a bit more gay, <laughs> which no. is kind of a lot. It's just like because hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of promotional artwork that makes it look like it, it was supposed to be like a uh, uh, a Yuri type of show. But I think it was a Yuri or you know, not Yuri. Yaoi, yaoi. like sort of yaoi ish type of thing. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of. Uh, Gotta rake in those Yeah, because a lot of the be shonen designs are they're marketed that way, but the show itself doesn't have. doesn't really have it, but there are some scenes where Bonnie and Gigi kind of come off as a bit of a gay couple in some scenes. So yeah, um, if you could add characters to J Star's Victory versus Plus, which characters you would choose? Well. I don't know, I kind of felt like the, the mandatory ones that should have been there already would have been like uh, Zoro from one, Zoro and Sanji are like just easy examples. Yeah, I don't know why, but I, they got Hancock, but not Zoro. I'm like, really? Yeah, I, I guess they were trying to add more of a, like a female gamer department, but even then there wasn't that many girl They could have just had Rukia. Like instead of having her support, had her as an actual yeah, character, be playable, and then Tenny goes for Kaguna. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah well, then again, true. Gintama actually has a bunch of like women that can get shit done. I mean, there's Sukuyo, uh, Sachan, and then um, that girl that's part of the uh, the the thorny the thorny Gumi or whatever. <laughs> like, I forgot what they're called. Oh, yeah, the ones that. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. again, there's Hichikata also. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let me think. Well, the other big shonen ones would be like uh, Kiniko Man, Tarchan, Ryo Saiba, and uh, Cobra. And I don't know, I guess for Vista North Star, like, they could throw in Toki to make like the trio, but I don't know, I feel like if they add in Ray, that'll be more diversity for gameplay. Then again, they could also throw in Mamiya, I suppose, or Jaggy, but. And then I'm not sure if, like, it was already out at the time. Actually, I think it was out at the time of the game, but, like, I don't know. Maybe they added some characters from Hero Academia. Oh, yeah, they could do that now. So, they yeah. all might. Just add in All Might. Just smash Every everyone. Dick. All Might, support only. <laughs> oh, that would, that would be so fucking yeah. terrible. All Might smashes into battle. Uh, smashes into into the jump stars, I don't know. <laughs> Texas smashes your <laughs> All my is <laughs> oh, how does it go like uh like like 
All Might is here. <laughs> that that's it. All Might yeah, is here. But just the thing is, there's a lot of special moves that they, they, I don't know why they didn't do them. Like for a uh, new Bay, for him to transform into like the uh, uh, you know into his demon, and then send goes for Thornico. Like having yeah. that type of move set, and then uh, what other character was there? Yeah, I don't know. There's definitely a lot, a lot of things that could that could be improved upon now. Like for example, like with Gohan, they didn't want to spoil the anime revelation of him, you know, getting his hair longer and turning buff. Oh yeah, that that muscle form. Yeah, and then Jotaro and Dio were supposed to be in it, but they didn't make it. Yeah, that was really surprising considering at the time the. Part three anime was yeah, on. Yeah, because there's data of them in the game, and I remember there's one YouTube video where someone was able to use like I guess hack into it or something. He used a uh, Naruto as sort of like the mod for Jotaro's move set because he he used a Shadow Clone to act as the Star Platinum because the Star Platinum would pop out in certain moves, and you can tell it was Jotaro because Naruto would have had his hand in his right po- right hand pocket, you know, so, like. Oh. And also doing some poses from, you know, Jotaro's moveset. And like the, like the victory animation and stuff like that, so you can tell that it was from that. But yeah, it's just like, then again, if maybe if they make another one, maybe it'll be Josuke or the Summer Round or, unless they expand the limit of uh, three to four characters per series, because then they would have like a huge game. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question now. What do you, what do you think about Beelzebub? You have plans to make a review about it? If yes, please make a review of the manga because it's so much better. Which, yeah, I, I've ever seen a few episodes of Beelzebub, and I'm already aware of the ups and downs of both versions. Yeah, I've actually read the manga. I started off with the anime, uh, but then it started getting too fillerish, so I went to the manga. Manga was good until it started focusing a little bit too much on the action. And then, uh, because the series was good when it was primarily focused on comedy. And then occasionally when I throw in some action, it was kind of cool. Like the first kind of serious arc with the going against that one, um, delinquent leader at his school. You know, that was cool. And then later on, there was that whole, like, uh, like, when it was, with the school stuff, it was fine, but then when they started adding in more and more demons and all that shit, like, I don't know, I found myself liking it a lot less. But, yeah. Feels a bub. 